uh, all, I want to say that all nations in the world released prisoners uh, in the situation of COVID, except the Israeli occupation. Hello, my name is Stanley Heller. Welcome to the struggle. Pardon our appearance, but we're moving. We're going to be showing you parts of the Gandhi Peace Award 2020 for today and the next couple shows. Unfortunately, the Zoom file was corrupted, so we're going to have to recreate parts. As moderator, I started off with an introduction about this year's award. I said, in part, we've been saddened that a majority of progressives have not understood what's going on in Syria and have lost sight of the hundreds of thousands of Syrians who have demanded their rights. So many on the left are lost in the fog of geopolitics following the tattered flag of a phony anti-imperialism. That's one reason why we decided to dedicate the award this year to the brave doctors and medical workers and rescue volunteers of Syria and give the award to Maysoon al-Misri and Dr. Zahar Salul. The program began with video of the work of four artists. The first is Mark Nelson, a school art teacher from Iowa and an amazing and prolific artist who has taken the Syrian cause as his own. Hello, my name is Mark Nelson and I am an artist and a teacher living near Chicago, Illinois. I am honored today to be presenting some of my artwork at the Gandhi Peace Award. Especially, I feel the recipients of this award, Dr. Zahir Sahul and Mesuna Masri, are examples of peace, kindness, and courage in the face of war and pain. Um, while the Assad regime in Russia destroys using bullets and bombs, Dr. Zahir and Ms. El Masri have created hope and healing in a very troubled land. The world uh, is an extremely broken place, especially now, and, but I feel that human beings like Dr. Zahir Sahul and Mesun al-Masri are rebuilding the world with foundations of compassion and courage. So there are no words to thank them for what they have done to instill peace upon this earth. The drawings that I'm showing today are sketches. Um, I do these very quickly with charcoal ink, watercolor, and I'm showing them in a certain order. I want to show how from destruction um, through the bombs and the uh, attacks from the Assad regime in Russia, the White Helmets, which Maysun al Masri was a White Helmet volunteer, how the White Helmets initially go in, they rescue, and then they transfer the victims of these bombings to the medical professionals like Dr. Zahir Sahul. And I wanted to show that kind of path to healing and hope that that happens in Syria. Um, at the very end of the, of the drawings, I have a, a few drawings about the current crisis in Idlib, which is the crisis of COVID-19, which is compounding the, all, the starvation and the hunger and the continued bombing by the regime and its allies. And I, again, the people like Zahir Sahul and Mesun al-Masri are, are desperately needed in, in places where not only is there war and famine, but also now um, illness. So I hope uh, you enjoy the artwork and I appreciate the opportunity to show it. Thank you.
be sure you see Nelson's updated Syrian version of Goya's Disasters of War. We link to it on the homepage of PEPeace.org. Now, Molly Crabapple, an artist with a growing international reputation whose work has graced the Brooklyn Library, a cover of Time magazine, a viral video of AOC's vision of the future, and a book about Raqqa, Syria, called Brothers of the Gun. Next, we had art from Adiba Alnamar, but it was done live. We hope to have an interview and show you some of her works of art soon. The final art artist was Akram Swedan. He doesn't use the normal canvas. He turns objects of war into beauty. He is living in unoccupied Syria near Aleppo. He writes, my city Duma in eastern Ghouta was one of the cities that suffered unprecedented bombing and blockade compared to other cities. That's when I wanted to draw the world's attention to this city and in search of peace and to demand human rights. I began collecting remnants of war such as remnants of missiles and bombs and coloring and decorating them to demonstrate the Syrian people's love for life. I named my project Painting on Death.
please note that the music that accompanied both the videos of Molly Crab Apple and Akram Swedam was composed and played by Tamar Suhuri, an oud player who teaches at the Edward Said National Conservatory of Music in Beit Zahur, Palestine. Now the concluding section of the Zoom talk by Ubay Abudi, the Palestinian American put in administrative detention and then on trial by the Israel apartheid state. His interviewer, MIT professor Haynes Miller. At this point in the interview, he was talking about what COVID did in the Israeli prison. So the situation of with COVID actually, we reached a point where we thought of uh, going on an open-ended hunger strike in order to put light on the issue of COVID inside the prison and uh, pressure the prison administration uh, in taking steps for uh, ensuring the health of the prisoners. Uh, oh, I want to say that all nations in the world released prisoners uh, in the situation of COVID, except the Israeli occupation. The Israeli occupation released uh, the criminals in the Israeli society that uh, were being held, but us Palestinians who are political prisoners, uh, there are educators, professors, medical doctors among us in prison, uh, uh, civil society workers, etc. Uh, we were kept inside, even though uh, the sentences you are talking about, most of the Palestinians, the 4,400 political prisoners, most of them have uh, short-term sentences less than two years. Um, Uba, I wanted to um, think about, ask your uh, opinion about uh, what effect your conviction and imprisonment has, has had. It's had a tremendous effect on, on you and your family, of course, but also on the Bissan Center, I suspect. And so could you talk about that? Well, there's a phenomenon worldwide that's uh, called the shrinking space for uh, civil society uh, to work. The, the phenomenon of shrinking space is that governments and uh, uh, the uh, current uh, world system that's in operation today doesn't uh, give way for dissenters, for people that are critical of the situation, uh, much room or much space to work and talk, etc. For us as a civil society organization, we actually been feeling the shrinking space before my arrest. This is part of the global and local uh, movement, the criminalization of uh, human rights defenders, uh, the prosecution, the arrest. This is uh, not just uh, in Palestine. I actually been to Philippines uh, uh, before my arrest in five months, I think in April. I was in Philippines and I listened to human rights defenders there about their experience of uh, prosecution, uh, arrest, etc. in the uh, Duterte prisons. Uh, in Pal in Bissan, Bissan, actually, they suffer, uh, They had a huge attack against them from right-wing organizations, Israeli right-wing organizations, and even, uh, I would say, uh, hackers, etc. The Bissan website, which we had recently updated just before my arrest, actually, and it cost us uh, a lot of money, a lot of resources for us as a small center. Uh, was taken down and it took us uh, a long time to, to be able to get it back uh, working uh, from cyber attacks. Uh, and this actually also coincided with uh, uh, the visibility that my case uh, took on uh, uh, my work. As Bissan Center also for the shrinking space, actually we also suffered because we rely on uh, what I call it, uh, we rely on uh, foreign funding, on fundraising from uh, uh, other organizations, etc. Uh, some of uh, the prospect uh, partners that we were going to sign with and work with in the coming uh, months, they actually, some of them got afraid of the, because of the arrest and of the propaganda that was made. So the 
So the center also suffered financially. I want also to give uh, uh, also notice for uh, the changing circumstances today, more, uh, I would say, more restrictions are being applied on Palestinian uh, civil society. Uh, as Palestinian civil society, your work as a critical being uh, siding with the poor, siding with the marginalized, siding with the weak, uh, being critical of the occupation is not even getting a lot of space from traditional uh, donors or uh, organizations that might open up, uh, that we used to collaborate with uh, previously. Of course, on the other side, I want to say on the positive side, we had also our uh, strategic partners like Scientists for Palestine, like other organizations also, I don't want to mention everyone, but uh, they were actually wonderful also in the period of my arrest. They stood by the center. They also supported the work and this is how we continue our work today. Uh, for Bissan also, uh, the targeting is part of, a, I think, uh, a systematic targeting that doesn't want a progressive voice of uh, Palestinians, uh, of critical Palestinians to be there connected to the world. Our work actually also with the, the connections, those connections that we are making on the world uh, scene with the uh, scientists for Palestine, with people from Philippines, Belgium, Germany, etc. Uh, this kind of work actually exposes a lot of things, exposes the crimes that the occupation is doing against the people, exposes corruption, exposes, uh, uh, I would say, uh, exposes uh, the marginalization that people are also suffering, the abuse to human rights. So those kinds of connections are targeted by the Israeli right wings, especially, and trying to have, a scare, I would say, a scare tactic of targeting uh, those organizations, those uh, people that are supporting us in the uh, global north and uh, the progressives and uh, issuing a lot of slander and sometimes even uh, uh, prosecution. For us in, uh, in Bissan, uh, we've been actually harassed by uh, the PA, uh, Israel, uh, Palestinian, actually big business monopolies, private sector. Mm. We've been harassed by all of those sides whether it was arrests, whether it was uh, 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 crackdowns, whether it was also uh, lawsuits in, uh, uh, in even in, sometimes even in Palestinian uh, courts due to works we did on exposing uh, uh, abuses to human rights and the abuses to uh, basic socioeconomic rights that the people uh, have. That's our program for today. Keep safe, folks, but keep active. I'm Stanley Heller for The Struggle.